so uh, over two months ago, I submitted uh, to renew my passport, and at the time, it, I did it expedited just to be sure I had plenty of time, and the estimate was four to six weeks. And then right after I mailed it, they got overwhelmed with applications, and they changed the estimate to six, what did they change it to? Eight to 12 weeks, which put the thing coming in like, you're right before I'm supposed to leave. Well, something, they did get to my passport and review it in time. And then they sent me a thing about my physical address, and I don't remember, I didn't make copy of the second page, and I must have left it blank or something, given that I don't have a physical address, to truly to speak of, but I didn't, I must not have put one, or I put the P.O. box. And so now the only way I can get my passport before I leave is to drive to the nearest passport office that has the most, the soonest available appointment, which is Seattle. And uh, the soonest appointment is Tuesday, and I fly out Wednesday. <laughs> But uh, that also means that I not only have to get to my appointment, I have to wait around until they print my passport book, um, which should hopefully be the same day. Um, and yeah, so that has taken basically two more full days uh, by the time I go through all this out of my time available to get everything ready before I leave. So. A new place, a new home for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. I know man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. I wish I was not out of large gloves. Extra large gloves actually, but these are stretching. It's the last day of work, so making it work. Come on. Damn, pine needles. Needles have become part of the program here. No getting this perfectly smooth with this tool set here. But we'll get as close as we can. Nice to have the door all back back together, and and this piece was kind of rusty, so I just sanded down and painted it. I, I know it doesn't really match exactly, but just glad to have it not rusting. And I'm real happy now with this last layer of epoxy, this thickened epoxy I put on here, um, because I um, this this gets it about as leveled out as it can be, um, and it's still curing. But I'm just trying to. Pull the pine needles out while it's still soft enough to pull them out. There we go. Anyway, I like that. I once that's cured, um, it'll. I can put this deck non-skid coating on it, and it should. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'll do the whole back deck or exactly what I'll do, but I might just coat the whole back deck in it, and uh, and hopefully it'll match pretty well. And then I did just a couple little minor repairs over here. I guess I can pull the epoxy, pull the pine needles out of those too. Yeah, where it was. Where the finish is getting kind of loose um, but then i'll just coat the whole thing and that should hold it together for for a while so it's been i was just thinking uh nearly two years or about maybe exactly two years since i started downsizing um so two years ago i was still in my big house with, with like an unbelievable amount of stuff and started that process of downsizing into thin the RV. And so, um, and we're approaching a two year mark and we started to do that. And, and now it is my final day in thin the RV uh, because I today need to finish moving out. And um, I guess I could still technically be in thin tomorrow, but that's pretty much, pretty much it. I am my T minus two days uh, to get everything totally ready to go. Um, so, 
Yeah, it looks like a complete disaster in here, but I actually have cleaned out almost, you know, the most of every cabinet. Um, and I've got these big bins. I'm decided since uh, the way the weather is here and everything else that um, I wanted everything to be in bins so it's stackable, weatherproof to a great extent, and, you know, mice and rat proof and everything else. And so um, I was just thinking how I'm still downsizing. Literally two years later, I'm still... I don't think the downsizing, when you go on this this path to minimizing your life, I don't think you ever stop downsizing. Um, and then the funny thing is I'm still traveling. with, uh, So I'm traveling with these two little suitcases and everything on the couch is stuff I still want to bring along with my backpack and my computer. And I'm like, this is, and those things are already pretty packed. And I'm like, okay, this, I'm still not even traveling light really, but Anyway, yeah, so this is it. Um, the state of thin um, mid packing. And I guess it doesn't look too bad. It's a bit of a mess. But uh, getting through it. I'm trying to put all fabrics into these space bags, except that I'm out of space bags and you can see there's still a lot of linen. So uh, I don't really have time to go to the store anymore, but. Um, anyway, that's I'll figure that out. Maybe um, over the next couple of days, I'll I'll be by a store for sure, and I can pick some space bags up to pack the last of the linens. Outside fin is pretty much the same story. Those are all my empty bins, um, and I'm still trying to sort things out here, and still got things in compartments, but most of that's in bins and such, where I can just grab them out and start packing them, and then packing everything. Pretty much into my trailer and I'm only packing stuff into Resurrection the boat um, that if I decide to sell Resurrection that could that would go with Resurrection so I'm still going to use this old uh, shed with the moss roof but I'll only pretty much put those bins in it and, and everything in the bins will be um, pretty safe from even if the shed collapses so so I actually uh, learned the solution to my little problem by accident, working on this door, for instance, and the window up front. Um, like the wall is actually a little thinner right here than, than the window is designed for everywhere else. The walls are thicker. And so to tighten up the outside frame, I put a little shims in here. But the actual solution um, is to uh, take this, well, actually you just take the frame back out probably, but um, or take the whole window out and inject a little foam into here and we know we know from doing these the rest of the boat that the foam will actually expand and push the wall out and and uh and it can be reset uh, reset the thickness of the wall so kind of a funny um i don't know funny it's kind of an annoying problem um the other thing that's a little bit interesting is on all these windows the uh, the frames kind of bow out a little bit at the corners and so I think the solution, this is aluminum and it's flexible. I'd get a soft cushion of some sort and uh, and like put it on here and just tap these in. And it's something I'd probably do in the future. It doesn't really affect anything right now. The windows are in and looking good. Um, let's go out and look at this one now that it's... Yeah, see now this one's real tight. Might actually just... I don't know, actually it's pretty good. Might have actually got it too tight, I don't know, but one long as it's not leaking, that's uh, that's the whole thing here is to have this work right. So dang it. Yeah, unfortunately gaskets seem to be made for these and my light bulbs I had LED bulb trees I used them all up on the RV so I'm just gonna put this on I'm just gonna put these on to not lose anything I don't think that was gonna be that hard those holes were there before I didn't try to patch them. Alright, other side. Okay. <sighs> 
This one has a gasket, so let's see if these screws will find their hole. So it's going to be getting dark pretty soon, and tomorrow I have to move Resurrection to its storage lot. But pretty much got everything sealed up, I think. I'm totally exhausted. I'll probably be more excited about it when I get a little rest. But windows look great. Sealed up everything except for, the, of course, the back window. All in all, everything I plan to do. <laughs> yeah, it's still a mess. Here's the back window. Paint's almost dry. Here's all the bins and toolboxes and everything. All the cushions are in there. I've got to get them moved into the boat pretty much tonight. It's crazy, but I'm getting on it. I think it on here. Oh, it, this boat feels amazing. I'm so excited. It's been a long time coming. Just did the back window. And I didn't, I mean, I, I'm kind of in a rush and this is my last day, so I did get some paint on the frames just because I had a little bit of time uh, but I didn't get a chance to paint this inner frame, so that's a little disappointing. And this door's ready for new weather stripping, but but uh, got the everything uh, hooked up and it's fit in here perfect. And and I got the doorknob on. The deadbolt works. Anyway, I'd be excited to move, you know, come back to the boat and finish it. Or if it ends up being sold, then. You know, I'm super excited for whoever gets to carry on here because it's super close. I mean, it runs great and it's starting to look real amazing. And the interior is so close to absolutely beautiful. This boat has come a long way and probably as good or better than it ever was brand new. Uh, with so much new stuff in it that it would have never been able to have before. So, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Anyway, this is pretty much my last evening in it. Um... I'm going to just put everything in here and tow it to its storage tomorrow and be leaving the country. So, yeah, but, uh, but it's so nice to be in here tonight. It's actually getting cool out, super cool, or almost cold outside. And it's misting and it is dry completely in here and warm and nice. It's, this boat is so well insulated and now it's even more insulated um, and more sealed up. There's no draft through the windows or anything. It, it is amazingly tight. I mean, in the RV... It may be a modern RV, but it's way more drafty than this. This boat is so tight. It's so insulated. It's so nice. Um, I would I'd be happy to come back and, and pick this project up if it works out that way. I am exhausted, but the boat is almost ready to store. I just... Um, this front deck, this front railing needs to really be redone, but I just had to not worry about looks and just get it sealed up so just sealed everywhere on the and tried to screw it down tighter but well, most of these things just spin or there's like there's probably nuts on the back side i don't even know how you get to them at this point but i don't have time to worry about that but i just sealed it all up so hopefully there won't be any leaking here and i put everything into the front hatch um so in the front hatch is the anchors and the chain and the power cables and all the adapters and the water hose to for fresh water fill up and for cleaning the boat and so yeah that's ready to go and then I'll take you up on the flybridge just putting uh, putting the last few things under the boat that go with the boat I don't know uh, just trying to like I've said I'd, these are the bins that fit down under the bunks and I'm just trying to make sure if I 
or to decide to sell this boat that everything that should be with it is with it and everything that shouldn't be isn't and all right i'm gonna get these i hate to because i i don't think it's my permanent plan to have these stuck to the roof but i am gonna uh, adhere them to the roof with um, some of that double-sided tape um, so that they stay and keep the batteries charged and then all the fenders and everything and are all in here. There's even this um, bar in there that's a light bar that plugs into the top of the um, flybridge. So you have a top light, like an anchor light. So that's cool. Um, seats are tucked right up here in the front right now. The dinghy is right here. And I'm going to double and triple tarp this um, and really strap it down good so that it's uh, hopefully stays just pretty much dry up here. That's my goal and, and no sun on it. So I've got three tarps. Um, I've got this heavy deal here that drapes over everything and kind of sits pretty tight. And then I've got a smaller tarp that I had it last season. And I got a brand new larger tarp that'll go all the way over the top of all this. So triple, triple covered. Inside the boat's looking about as good as it has in a long time. Getting cleaned up. It still needs a good cleaning, but um, kind of got everything put together like it should be. And I'm uh, going to clean up the kitchen in here still, but I got it. Put a roll of paper towels in there, I guess. Get it cleaned up and got this converted into a bench. It's actually a super comfortable place to sit. And I got this made into a bed. The post, the post that turns this into a table and the base for it are all here. And that's, as soon as the flooring's in, that can be mounted. And so, anyway... Got all this stuff kind of tucked up here and ready for storage, ready to travel. Oh, bathroom needs a little more cleaning too, but it's it's getting there. So just a little more. I'm pushing hard today to try to finish. I wanted to get the boat into the storage yard today. That's the goal and I'm running out of day, but I'm gonna keep at it. So I'm in uh, downtown Seattle and I leave for Asia tomorrow and I finally just got my passport. Talk about last minute, but I was so happy. Now I gotta drive all the way to the other side of Portland. So I'm hitting the road. So it's my last day in the U.S. So I'll stay in Oregon. I fly out later and I'm about ready to finally move Resurrection over to its storage lot. And I just got finished. I never I never found time to coat the decks, um, unfortunately, um, but it's fine. I Now that I spilled the paint on there, I actually waterproofed the part I wanted to waterproof. So that's kind of funny. Anyway, I just finished vacuuming off virtually every pine needle and it's moving to a place where no tree crap will fall on it. It is going to be outside, but um, but as long as no uh, crap gets in there and clogs up the drain, then, oh, you see the paint, <laughs> the paint ran all the way through. Just realize that. Um, as long as nothing gets in and clogs up the drain, hopefully there's nothing in there clogging it right now. I might stick something in there and make sure, but um, then the water just drains right out. and doesn't drain. If it overflows, it ends up going down in places it shouldn't. So uh, down into the hatch and then down into the boat bilge and, and then it's a disaster. So trying to limit that. So I'm going to... Uh, vacuum off this now and, and vacuum out all the hatch at the very last second but I am going to even though I can't coat the whole deck I'm going to coat my little repairs there's a, a little one right here and then the one that's under the mat uh, I'm going to coat those in a little of this non-skid uh, surface I don't have time to do the whole deck but I'll do that like last minute maybe even after I leave or after I'm hooked up and leaving that way it can dry and I won't be running it out through on top of it so um, so I'll put a little coating on the freshly, you know, repaired stuff, but the rest of it will need, the rest of it will need to be, uh, coated at any point. This I mean, the coatings here just need to be taped off, cleaned, and done. Uh, most importantly, no water's degrading anything. I do want to show any, just to remind myself for the future and, um, anyone who might, um, be using this or buying this boat if I sell it. Um, there we go. Um, I, I am not a skilled welder. It's one of my things I don't do, and this fender needs to be re-welded, and I should... 
I made the, you know, we learned our lesson with the windows. Don't put freaking um, this tape on stuff unless you, if you ever want to get it off again. But anyway, this fender needs to be repaired before this drives too far. And I had this little bracket here. Um, and I was thinking that since I couldn't weld, I could use self-tapping screws um, or pre-drill this. But this is some thick steel and I just haven't had a chance to do that. So I'm not going, I'm only going less than a mile. Um, it's not going to be a problem, but if this thing were towed, this needs to be screwed on here or welded. Um, that's the only thing about the trailer. Now, it pretty much was loose all the way from Arizona and was fine, but still, that's that's not really okay. Yeah, and it's all tarped up, and I reinforced, I mean, I, I tied the tarp down um, pretty well all the way down the side of the boat, so um, I'm pretty happy. Uh, with how that's going to keep it's a heavy duty tarp and unlike Arizona Arizona man tarps just the sun kills them in like three months but around here a heavy duty tarp like that should last uh, plenty of time I'm not worried about that um, that'll keep I mean there's there's a lot of rain and clouds not not nearly as much sun as there is in Arizona so just keeping the rain out of it that's that's what we're trying to do here so that's it uh, off we go Yeah, so that wasn't completely smooth because the, the damn tree there was kind of rubbing against the boat trying to get it out. So didn't really scratch the paint too much, I don't think, but that's kind of a disappointment. And I was dumb and I left the air compressor sitting right next to the boat and whacked it with the tail light. So I cracked the rear tail light on the trailer. But now we got to see if we can get up this damn hill. Pretty steep hill for a two wheel drive truck, actually. Dang it, we almost had it. Not sure about this. Oh, we don't have trailer brakes. It's kind of a problem. Yeah, so that uh, situation didn't go very well. Um, like, because of no trailer brakes, and I didn't make it up the hill, I should have just stopped right at the top where the wheel started peeling out and got a pull there. I thought I was dumb and thinking I would back down this, and then impossible to try to control the boat trailer going backwards down this. Um, so I ended up in the neighbor's driveway, and um, and then now I can't pull forward and, and uh, do anything if I... Yes, I could have just turned sharper and gone right down his driveway. That would actually have been the smartest move, and then I wouldn't be blocking the road too. But anyway, now I've got a wrecker coming. So now I've got a wrecker coming. He's going to meet me up here, and I don't know what he can do because he said he he only has two-wheel drive wreckers, and he won't drive on a dirt road, so that's not going to help too much. Just need someone with a heavy-duty truck. That's all I need. Lots of people around here have them. I don't know. I don't have any friends like that, unfortunately. Well, good news, the tow truck uh, gave a pull, gave me a pull up the hill, so I'm at the top of the hill now. Just gotta give this tow truck driver $150 I didn't plan to spend, but at least the boat's safe and the truck's safe, and we're at the top of the hill, and now it's just level paved road across to the storage lot. It's less than a mile, so I'll just go real slow and take it easy and get it there. Okay. Safely delivered. Now that's some struggle, that's for sure. But uh, and got some brush marks on both sides now from the trees. But that's, that's the way it is. It's all easy enough stuff to. I already talked about maybe doing another coat of paint anyways, and so kind of needs it anyways. So that's not really a stressful thing. The brilliant thing is the fiberglass and everything's in good shape now, and. And the windows are new, and she's all locked up and watertight, and the flybridge is all covered. And so, good to go for I wonder how long. I guess we'll find out in the future. So, I leave 
officially in 30 minutes. I just finished packing all the tools and everything into the shed and just closed up the trailer. And thankfully my mom's packing my last few bins and doing the last bit of laundry. And also she's helping clean up the RV, so that's nice. So now 30 minutes to shower, dress, and finish packing. I feel like I've been running a marathon, but pretty much did it.